Hey everyone, it's Caitlin McKegg, your Phoenix real estate broker, and I'm here with the Desert Dreamers real estate team. I have Brittany Cook and Cynthia Salvador, both awesome agents on our team, and today I figured, why don't we just talk a little bit about first-time home buyers? It's a big deal when you're buying your house for the first time, and we've all been there. It's scary. We've also helped a lot of people who have been there too. So we're giving our best tips, advice, and really just kind of generally talking through the process all together and hopefully it's helpful for you. So before we started rolling, Brittany was talking about all of the things that you need to think about when you start the first time home buying process. So let's just start there. I think that uh, the main thing I, we were talking about is as a first time home buyer, at least for myself, in being a young first time home buyer, you can be seduced by the process of buying a home or the idea of owning a home and can forget about a lot of some of the things that are really important because we're excited, we're looking forward to this next step. And then we also can have people that are polar opposite that are just completely terrified and right. can't really make a decision mm -hmm. and can be paralyzed by the process of having maybe too many options or too much information thrown at them at once. Yeah. Yes. Being scared, I feel like I see more often than not. And also there's so much research you can do. Mm -hmm. And so I think with it's great, but at the same time, it's kind of a double-edged sword because people get wrong information oftentimes when they're right. doing their own research. And this is, I mean, the biggest purchase you're probably going to make. So it can get overwhelming and it can be to where you have so many numbers in your mind and you're thinking, can I afford this? Can I do that? Can I, and it gets to be too much sometimes. Yeah. That's why it's so important to not focus so much on all these different headlines that you're getting, whether it be in your inbox, social media, the news, you really just need to focus mostly on where your mortgage payment is going to be and ultimately how long you want to be in that home because if you're comfortable with the mortgage payment and ultimately long term it you will reap the rewards then that's really where your main focus should be is the affordability there is nothing that can affect me being able to make this mortgage payment Right, get your finances in order. And that's going through your debt to income ratio, that's going through all of your monthly expenses, that's going through how much you spend just going out to eat and simple things like that. But that's probably the, the first thing that I think of and I did think of when we purchased our home was where is this money gonna go and how much can we afford? Before you even talk to a lender, we would sit down and talk about what our expenses are and what you could afford because let's be honest, you go to a lender, they tell you you're qualified for 500 thousand that doesn't mean you should be spending five hundred thousand on a home and comfort level is really important in that and of course a lender can help you figure out what that monthly payment looks like and what you're truly qualified for but you have to be comfortable when you have to know what kind of lifestyle do you want to live after mm -hmm. purchasing a home do you want to maintain the lifestyle you're you're living do you want that lifestyle to be maybe more elaborate or do you are you going to need to pull back in order to afford or get what you're looking for in a home yeah it's so huge to you know a lot of people are scared to budget or don't know how to budget and that i think is the, the number one thing you need to do as a first time home buyer know your budget know your monthly expenses down to a t down to your netflix bill once you know this is how much everything costs every month, you kind of know, okay, this is how much more I can afford. Right. The last thing you want getting into your new home is thinking, oh, am I going to even be able to afford next month's payment? Am I going to be able to go out to eat as much? Like, you don't want to be house poor. That's not your first step of going into home ownership. That's true. And with interest rates the way that they are right now, which historically isn't extremely high, but coupled with the prices that we've had lately, it makes it really hard to be affordable in this market. So a lot of what we're seeing, again, now that is the market shifted, is that sellers are actually going to pay some closing costs or help buy down a buyer's interest rate. And that right. helps significantly with that monthly payment. So those are all things to keep in mind too, just because on paper it says what you can afford or what your payment might be, there are some things we can negotiate throughout the process to get that payment down if the seller can buy down your rate. Or help with your closing costs. Another huge thing that I'd like to say is that I think right now for first-time homebuyers we do have a window of opportunity for them 
because there has been this shift in the market, we have, I think, an imbalance of sellers who are either on board with the shift or who are not on board with mm -hmm. the shift. And we have, I think, some frantic sellers who are eager to get a property off their hands. And in that case, we aren't seeing them sit on the market for very long. You're having more time to, or excuse me, we're seeing them sit on the market longer and you're not having to drastically make a decision. Right. At the on drop the of a dime, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're you're able to go back to the sellers and ask for maybe X Y Z to help you bring down that mortgage payment while interest rates are um, maybe higher and prices are higher as well. It's a nice window of opportunity, especially coming from what we came from, <laughs> yeah, which was insanity. So it's, it's really nice to see that people can negotiate again, actually take time to decide and maybe have some options of how many houses they look at. Right. Not having to worry about whether or not the house is going to appraise. Yeah. That's a huge thing now with the price reductions and not so much competition that you're having to drive up the over asking price. Right. Mm -hmm. All these things that ultimately help it be more affordable to buy a home especially as a first-time home buyer yeah mm -hmm. and even now you have more options of course but you could even go see the house that you really like twice maybe three times mm -hmm. now to really see okay will this house fit what I'm looking for where before if you found a house and you were lucky to find one that didn't have an offer you had to make a decision right then and there did I want to purchase this yeah you know what I find interesting how when I speak with first-time home buyers they don't know what the closing process looks like like they don't know what escrow means right and we deal with this every day and we kind of forget but I have a lot of first-time home buyers ask me like so once we make an offer when can we move into the house how does that work and so explaining there's so much that happens between once an offer is accepted to closing day and what does closing day mean does that mean you move in does that mean you just get keys does that mean you sign paperwork because in other states things are different too so there's a lot for first-time home buyers just to know even past that okay I'm qualified okay I looked at houses now what there's right. a whole bunch of stuff that happens next yeah, and another thing that I would say that I answer a lot when it comes to first-time home buyers is knowing the difference between earnest deposit and your closing costs, your down payment. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they are two different things. So tell us more about that. Why are you putting me on the spot? <laughs> The best way that I would say the earnest deposit is you showing that you have interest in the property, that you are um, wanting to follow through mm -hmm. with the purchase, that you're serious, and mm -hmm. it's good faith money for the seller. It in, kind of shows your seriousness about purchasing the home. It helps them feel comfortable taking the home off the market if they do accept your property. And it's usually about 1% of the purchase price. And then your down payment, that earnest money is applied to the down payment. So you don't have to budget for that separately. So if you're doing 1% of a purchase price of 400000 that $4,000 will be applied to your down payment, whatever your down payment is at closing. It's not an additional expense, right. which I think some people don't always know. But what were your biggest fears as a first-time home buyer? At that point, the inventory. I mean, there weren't that many homes to choose from. Whereas now, the things are sitting on the market, you've got so many more options. So I think that was the, the biggest hurdle is finding the property that's going to best fit you and your lifestyle. And I think that goes to say for anybody that's purchasing a home. But knowing that you have more than just maybe two or three options now, that's really what stands out. Mm -hmm. And I don't regret purchasing a home by any means, but it's something where it took time. I mean, when we were looking, I maybe put in eight or nine different offers before actually getting the home that we purchased. My experience was so opposite than that. Purchasing in 2016, I did not know the difference between a seller's or a buyer's market when I was a first time home buyer. I just went out and looked at homes with my agent and I I ultimately felt no pressure to choose a home. I was able to think about it. I went back to the same home twice. I would say my biggest fear was, well, at the time I was so young, it was location. I wanted to still be in a location close enough to be, A, in my price range, but also close enough to be able to get to my friends because I was so young. But I think also it was the inspection. When I, I purchased an older home, it was built in 1964. It had a lot of weird things going on and I did not know anything what it would cost to have any of these things repaired and you're, you're listening to an inspector tell you well that's just kind of minor you could go to Home Depot for this or you have your agent telling you that mm -hmm. I think that was my biggest I was very comfortable and I had a 
great uh, lender who explained what my mortgage was going to be and that was really where my focus was is I just want to be able to afford this home but then you add on that inspection and you get that back and you're going whoa these are a lot of things but after living in my home now going on six years I found that those things that were found in that inspection report seemed really big to me at the time mm -hmm. but they actually weren't that big of a deal and I was and slowly over time I've taken care of those things or had them replaced or done something about them but or they still exist and <laughs> yeah. I didn't take care of them because they really aren't that big of a deal yeah. and it's daunting when you hear it for the first time Absolutely. you've got this long inspection report hundreds of pages and and all you're thinking is, I have to fix this and this yeah. and this before you even move in. And a lot of times that's not the case. Well, and as a first time home buyer, let's face it, most of us are pretty tight on our budget and what we have in our checking or savings account. Mm -hmm. We're typically purchasing a home and we have a set number that we can't really go past as a first time home buyer or you know, a down payment. We have that already set aside and then typically we don't want that to change. We want that to stay the same. We don't want any unexpected surprises when it comes to the down payment and what needs to come out of pocket I think as a first-time home buyer it's sure. really important for them to know what they're gonna be paying so inspection is definitely a big hurdle in the process and it's a lot of things that you'll likely have never heard of before and not sure how catastrophic or not they are but a great inspector will be able to give you an indication of what is urgent what's not of course we do everything we can to negotiate with the seller to be able to make those repairs for our buyers or provide a credit so you can get them done after closing. It's just a process. You have to work through every new piece of information that you get along the way. That's what your due diligence period is for, to investigate the property, to investigate the area, the HOA, all of that information so that you feel comfortable moving forward with the house. I think it's interesting that you guys both purchased at different times in, in different markets and you mm -hmm. each brought up the fact the market conditions. So that's super important too because if you're going into this process and you have no idea what the market conditions are, how are you supposed to know how you're going to react, uh, how you need to react in order to secure a house? Or what advantages you have mm -hmm. as a buyer. And so that play Or disadvantages role. you have as a buyer. Right. Because right. that does happen there. Mm -hmm. There are certain areas or certain markets that you just regardless whether everywhere else is in a buyer's market you may not have an advantage in that area right right that's exactly right so if you are working with an agent whether it's in another state or if it's here and you didn't choose us sadly <laughs> Um, make sure you're finding out and asking what is the market like in the particular city that you're interested in or just in across the valley whatever it is because all of that makes a difference for example I'm working with some buyers right now who really want to buy a property in the strongest market of the valley right now it's still in a seller's market it's still really strong and they're not interested in paying the seller's market prices and we're not able to come to terms with anyone so far because wanting to put in low offers in that market just not having it right now but but if we moved that strategy to a different market that's in a buyer's market, they probably have much better luck. So market conditions are super important to you know make sure your agent's on top of that and is, is guiding you correctly on those things because it's not just a cut and dry process. No, I don't think it ever is for any transaction. Like there's always something that's going to get tossed in there. But that's why working with a great realtor, like one of us, <laughs> um, that's why I think that makes sense is you're you're working with somebody and first of all, buyers don't even pay any for working with a realtor like but let's just clear the air here so you're using us as a resource to assist you through probably the biggest purchase of your life why would you not want to work with someone who can help you do that working with a real estate agent it's super important to actually interview your real estate agent as well especially as a first-time home buyer and you have not done this process before you've never ever gone down this road you need a real estate agent and a solid lender both teaming up providing mm -hmm. you information educating you along the way and in setting you up for success and ensuring that they get you across the finish line. Mm -hmm. The lender is really important too because they have to be accurate with all the information that they give you and uh, and have in order to get the offer done. They have to communicate with the listing agent and with us. So they're 
kind of the go-between on a lot of things, especially the financial piece. And you want the seller to feel comfortable with your financing in order to accept your offer. And so a good lender is going to be able to share that information with the listing agent so that your offer is accepted and we don't have any bumps through the process. And you want to make sure they know all the nuances of different HOAs and stuff like that horrible experience one time with a lender I'd never worked with before who didn't know some information about an HOA and we got three days before closing and my client was no longer qualified for the property. So make sure you're working with a lender you trust because that makes a huge difference too. Okay, so what is your biggest piece of advice to a first time home buyer? I think Brittany and I can agree on this one is to read what you sign. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the most important thing. No matter who you're working with, as a realtor, if you're working with a friend, whoever, you have to read what you're signing. And I mean, these are big time contracts, like you're buying a home. This isn't just something you can skip and sign and that's it. Yes. And you're going to get a ton of documents sent your way, whether you need to, you know, write a hand uh, sign them or you're going to get them sent electronically for signature, whether they're coming from us, your lender, title. Uh, it's so important to stop, read, ask questions or you know, have a real estate agent that will go over these things with you, will give you a heads up and say, this is coming your way. This is what it means. Here's a brief synopsis of what you're signing. Now, that's not to say you should fully rely on your real estate agent. Read what you are signing and know that you could potentially have set in place a contract between you and your real estate agent to work a certain number of months or t a certain time frame together. So really knowing to read what you uh, sign and then also interview your agent so that you are not stuck in a contract with an agent who maybe doesn't fit your style. Buyer broker agreements is what she's talking about, which not every agent has them or has their client sign them, but they do exist. And so it just means that you're hiring that agent as your buyer's agent and it's a certain period of time. Um, and if you guys can't mutually uh, agree to go your separate ways, uh, you may owe them a commission. And so to make sure if you're signing a buyer broker agreement that you're okay with that or that you're not, it's not required in Arizona to work with an agent. Good advice. Now, what would you um, give as the number one tip for first time home sellers or home buyers? I would agree with you guys. Read what you sign, um, but more than that, my biggest advice would be don't be afraid to ask questions. Yeah. Like, no question is a dumb question. That's you're, very true. You're signing a lot of documents. The contract alone is 11 pages, and it's all filled out. I mean, there's a lot of words in there. There's no right. blank pages in there. So right. It's a lot of info. So there's no dumb questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions, and make sure you trust who you're working with and feel like you've done your due diligence to find the right team to help you. Well, thanks for joining me. Of course. And thanks we for having us. all wore black today. <laughs> we did. It was not even intentional. <laughs> all right. Well, if you guys have any questions or if you're a first time home buyer, check the description below. I have a link to our first time home buyer guide and also just contact information where you can reach out with questions, set up a time to chat for a buyer consult. Whatever you need, we are here to help. So thanks as always for watching this channel. I'm Caitlin McKegg with the Desert Dreamers team at HomeSmart.